Hello, beta testers. In seven months, only two archers have been added to the superhero game, Marvel's Avengers. No dates on Black Panther's release, because of course there's not. There is only one enemy faction to fight, and zero Marvel locations in a bizarre choice to ignore the fantastic and varied locations the Marvel multiverse has to offer. There is no endgame. Dailies are still constantly bugged, and loot is absolutely terrible. Shocking, since this is a live service looter. There are only two villains to repeat, because after trying to add a third villain, even that bugged, and players pathetically attempting workarounds to varying levels of success often cannot get the game to function. But no worries. What Crystal Dynamics calls content is just doing what you've done before again. The space that the developers clearly used to test playable characters in was flipped into a quote, harm room. But even though it's a holographic room that can create enemies and in the story mode of this very game can change characters into other characters, should players attempt to play together, they cannot choose the same class or hero anywhere in the game, paradoxically including this holographic room. No environments, no modifiers, and can you imagine? Other games like Outriders, Warframe, Division, Genshin, Path of Exile, Destiny, Borderlands, Diablo not allowing you to choose the same class? With less than 500 people playing? Imagine if Star Trek's holodeck only ever looked like this. Imagine if the Danger Room in X-Men only looked like this. This is what Marvel's Avengers is. A game where heroes do not have synergy attacks something other games as far back as 2009 left blueprints for. Ultimate Alliance did it. Ultimate Alliance still does it. Lego games do this. But in Marvel's Avengers, you do this. Viewer, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. And if you haven't like, like this video, because I'm about to say some things. As I've said before, with boss design so pathetic, why not reskin a bunch of villains and just throw them into the game? Anyone with a brain could tell you how much love a Marvel fan has for their villains, especially recently. So you shipped a Marvel game with two villains, no team attacks, and heroes so ugly, online artists could fart out a better one in a few hours for free. In a video I released in November 2020, I suggested things like Thor's precision having an alternate electricity beam, beam attacks being able to melt enemies in place, the Bifrost being able to bring up teammates and bring them crashing back down, God Blast overcharging Iron Man. It's not just obvious that you don't read the comics, it's obvious that you don't watch the movies. Because to be frank, when Hulk can't lift a car, Thor can't bash Cap Shield for a concussive area of effect blast. And even traversal is so sad and slow that Destiny on a Sparrow provides more speed than flying as Iron Man does? You don't get it, Crystal Dynamics. In the intro, just the intro to X-Men 3, Colossus transferred his powers to Rogue to defend them. Kitty grabs Bobby, making them both phase to avoid an attack. Colossus throws Wolverine for the fast ball special. This kind of representation of the source material isn't just fan service. It's a demonstration of a fundamental understanding of what you're dealing with. In Outriders, a trickster can run up on an enemy casting a bubble that slows time within setting them up to be melted by the rest of the team. Devastators can leap up into the air suspending themselves to target an enemy on the ground and then Superman slam that motherfucker. You'll feel like some fusion between a Dragon Ball Z fighter, a superhero, and the goddamn Avatar. Eight heroic abilities, three of which you can activate at any one time. Branching skill trees, so when you run into others on your class, the likelihood is smaller that they're matching your build. You know, 
the thing that you tried to allow us to set up in this game, but all of the loot is garbage and the RNG makes the repetitive 48 floor high of a hell nah for most players. Marvel's Avengers, who somehow chose to ignore dynamic heroes in favor of punchers, kickers, and shooters. Kamala Khan, Kate Bishop, and Hawkeye were necessary. Ant-Man can shrink and grow. But nah, Wanda and Strange are magic, cosmic, confusingly powerful. But nah, Quicksilver is Quicksilver? <laughs> but nah, Spider-Man isn't even in the game. No date on him either. <laughs> He's only going to be on PS4 anyway, but rest assured, he'll play awfully since the height limit in these cringe maps are only six stories anyway. Did I mention that skins you purchase because they appear one way will appear another way after they've been purchased? A glitch that's so common that people are used to waiting in excess of multiple weeks for shit to get fixed. It happened with the Hulk skin, and it's happening right now with Thor and Captain America skins. Microtransactions that don't work. Defend this. Glitches, bugs, Hard crashes on brand new consoles are so prevalent that most encountering them simply stop playing, and those trying to stream this game can't even help but just laugh. Some people praise the single player mode which inexplicably delegates the Avengers to side characters, where you barely play some of them for 15 minutes without cutscenes. Real gamers, however, might be repulsed by the disgustingly brain-dead boss design and quick time event focused cancer to what is no more than a $20 to $30 game at best. But the game's biggest sin, aside from the forced inclusion of multiple canceled comic champion Kamala Khan as the protagonist, is the ugly, knock-off appearances of these great value Avengers that are alien to both their comic book and MCU counterparts when a mobile game is doing this better. When Fortnite is just copping a squat over you, you fucked up. And even though most people made the disgust with your character design more than apparent a year before this thing was rolling out, you still chose to fart out this ugly mess and charge $60, fully expecting people to pay $14 more for skins like this? Clearly. You've no idea what other games have to offer. If these facts trigger you, feel free to boost this video by commenting below and pretending that this specific channel didn't have 11 million views before Avengers the video game existed. I've actively been hiding from the recommended on YouTube for years because it's not a place for real people. Tony Bing can verbatim communicate to you defenders that YouTube's algorithm punishes people for not sticking to one thing and it should be clear from my filthy mouth alone that I don't give a fuck about catering to normies or jumping through the hoops necessary for popularity. And I'm just trying to document what some people are sweeping under the rug because it's not that big a deal. Well, that doesn't affect me. Well, let me tell you something. It affects the people who wanted this game to be good, who wanted this game to succeed, because people like you are actively helping this game Harlem shake in the grave. Can the game be saved? Can this game come back? Will this save the game? What about Xbox Game Pass? Oh, it's on PlayStation now, but will it ever be revived? Seven months you've been defibrillating this fucking corpse, bro. I'm so sorry, Dia. I'm leaving it in the video, too. She's cringing out of her body. <laughs> but listen closely, beta testers. As amazing as I consider Outriders and believe that it will satisfy any looter lover, I would never recommend the game in its current state because it has been crippled by server and connection issues, and that's the difference between me and a shill. I can love something and recognize its really crazy flaws. So my recommendation is to wait. You could buy it now, everything could go well, but if you're buying it to play with other people like I was, you may run into issues. Why does Outriders have over a hundred times the players that Marvel's Avengers does? Does it have an end game? Oh, it does? Does it have good loot? Oh, wow. Oh, there's even crafting? Oh, there's more than two bosses? Bruh, the jokes write themselves. I don't have to tell you why this game's better. It's complete. <laughs> 
Ask me if Outriders developers People Can Fly are communicating more in the few days that their game has been out than Crystal Dynamics has in months, because they have. Ask me if you think the issues afflicting Outriders right now will take seven months to fix, because I guarantee they won't. So here's my analogy. Outriders is like a club that everybody's willing to wait in line for, even if they're not certain they can even get in. Okay? Crystal Dynamics Avengers game is a shack that people wouldn't go into if you paid them out of fear of the shack collapsing in on itself. What's holding it up is the real question. Some of us might crowd around the shack and ask ourselves, any day now, there's some strings that we're not seeing? Is this like a test of some sort of like industrial glue? Why hasn't it caved in yet? And even weirder, somebody can come and show you a picture of what this shack is supposed to look like and you'll just be like, wow, bro, what? It's supposed to look like that? <laughs> so listen to me. By ignoring the source material, ignoring the lessons that the industry has learned over 10 years ago, but most egregiously of all, ignoring the fans, I think you guys know the answer to whether or not Marvel's Avengers is going to make a comeback. So the real question is whether or not your favorite character will make it into the game before they shut this bitch down, okay? I love you. Thank you for allowing me to talk your ear off. Um, forgive the lack of editing as it went into the rant at the end of the video, but, you know... Sometimes I just let myself talk. Get me some voice work on some really dumb source filmmaker projects and I'll love you. Or video game work. Do it. Do it. I believe in you. What are you doing? Okay? Comment in the comment section below your favorite type of ice cream.